Hello, welcome back to X-Men Classics. In this one, we're, co we're covering issues of Kenny, of Kenny X-Men, issues number 54 to 56. First, we're starting off with the final issue written by Arnold Drake. And this is issue. This is the cover to issue 54, where it's uh, kind of part two of a three-part story, of a, actually part two of a four-part story involving uh, the debut of Havoc and... Uh, Possibly the, the the one of like few times this character has been a major villain in a storyline, the Living Feral. Now the issue starts off with there are two cops trying to arrest Cyclops for apparently kill for killing somebody. But before it gets that, the the, the story is called Wanted, Dead or Alive, Cyclops, and uh, Don Hick is on the artwork still. But I believe this is his last issue, not mistaken. Um, no, he's he's still got about three more issues. Uh, he does this issue in the follow-up one, and he does issue sixty-four, which is the last issue he draws for the series. Mm -hmm. All right. Before he cut, they have a flashback. What happened? Uh, where Cyclops was going to this graduation ceremony. Um. For his brother, uh, Alex Summers. Which, he suspects he's a mutant. And of course, he's a very good athlete. They see him graduate from co I think it's high school, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's high school. Possibly, I don't know. And then, uh, well, he's... Um, well, I want to get changed. What he, uh, because they want to get something to eat because the graduation is over. And then he gets he gets attacked by this guy in Egyptian garb, gets knocked unconscious. Uh, then and then the X Men come in, of course, in the civilian garb, and they notice that he's Alex is missing, and Jean Grey picks up some kind of mental patterns, uh, it's like something is really wrong. And then we cut over to the Living Pharaoh, where he's apparently trying to sacrifice Alex Summers to get some power for some reason. I have honestly no idea why they decided to have him do this. Uh, it's not clearly explained why. Apparently he wants to become powerful. And then the X-Men attack him. Oh, I should also note, note this. Um, Angel is sporting his, at this point, I believe this is his fourth costume. Look very closely. I think this is his fourth costume overall. Angel has gone through at least 12 to 14 costumes over the years. Cyclops, on the other hand, he doesn't change his costume until the mid-80s. So he wears his costume for 20 years. Yes, 20 years. And, of course, as a fight breaks out after he, after he stops, uh, at the, at the Cyclops stops the living pair for sacrificing Alex Summers, and a fight breaks out, lasts for a few pages. And then the, then the Pharaoh gets away, along with his minions. Well, a couple of them anyways. And then, of course, fight so ensues. Cyclops attacks uh, the living Pharaoh. And he just tries to take him out, but he doesn't. Um, and, of course, Jean, uh, they attack him. Jean gets knocked out. Um, but Eric keeps up. And, of course, Cyclops frees uh, Alex. Uh, he frees his brother. And they talk for a little bit, and and, they, and then he takes a thing called the Pharaoh's Curse, Pharaoh's Eyes, Curse the Pharaoh's Eyes, tries to knock him unconscious, and then we cut away to what we've seen before, like, the, they're trying to rest, and then we cut back to, after the flashback is over, they, they cut away back to where Cyclops is, where cops are arrested him for murder, apparently he murdered the living Pharaoh, I'm not kidding, they think he murdered him, so... Well, at least they're not trigger happy. But this here, this is an old cliche. Yeah, someone's standing over body. Let's arrest the guy standing over. I think that he killed him. Yeah, it's an old cliche. I'm not sure why Arnold Drake did this, but it's a common cliche in fiction. He, he, I don't know if this is much in real life, but if you see someone's standing over body. You don't immediately suspect them. You have to have evidence. Even though this is the late 60s, they have no real evidence that he killed the living pharaoh. 
Yeah, there's no evidence that he killed them. You just see him lying on the ground for no apparent reason. And of course, Cyclops just takes other guns, knocks him unconscious, and apparently Cyclops is not only wanted for murder, but assaulting police officers. Cyclops had a good reason for, for, for doing that. I guess he wanted to go clear his name. And of course, uh, the, uh, the X-Men hear about this, and of course, they're all looking for him. And then the issue, well, this part of the story ends with uh, the Pharaoh being alive. Yep. Faked his death. Yep. And then we cut away to uh, the origin story of Angel, which this is only about two issues. Yeah, this is by far the shortest origin story I have ever seen uh, for these backup ones. Usually about four or five parts. This one's the shortest, being only two parts. Two or three parts. Yeah. Um, you have... Warren apparently climbing in the tree uh, when he's like, I'd say 12 years old. And of course his parents are like panicking because he's up there. But luckily he survives and lands into a pool like, oh, let's just admit it can be super lucky. And we see his butler drying his clothes. Yeah, we don't see this character very much. Yeah, Warren Butler. A guy who's very rarely seen in comics. Excuse me. Of course, they're all worried about him, so they uh, send him off to some. They say he's good in school, but apparently he has something wrong with his. Something he has big shoulder blades. Then he notices feathers popping out. Uh, then he notices a feather in his bed, and then he goes into uh, look in the mirror, and he is growing wings. Yep. So he has become sort of like he flies out when he smells fire, and of course uh, he gets everybody out. Well, he, 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 he does fit a disguise. His disguise is a nightshirt and a blonde wig. I'm not kidding. To be sort of the avenging angel. Yep. And then, of course, everybody's like, who is this angel guy? Like, after he saves them. It's a nice slow part. I think this part's only three parts long. I think so. Then we cut away to issue 55 of Uncanny X-Men. And... We have a surprise. The return of Roy Thomas as the writer for this series. And this issue picks up right where the last issue left off. You, the living pharaoh. Yep. And of course, Don Heck is um, still on the artwork for this series. I believe this is his second to last issue that he ever did. Because he does one more. He does it with New Adams. Um, and... Cyclops is surprised to see the Pharaoh alive, and of course the Pharaoh just talks to him a little bit, then he attacks him, and of course Cyclops tries to tackle him too. The fight seems a little while, and of course um, the police are looking for him, and of course they refer to him as the mutant murderer. Wow, Roy Thomas, you really try to shove that cliche down people's throats. I mean, that's a minor thing, at least they toned that down from the previous issue. <coughs> Excuse me. And of course, while the spices are going on, the X Men kind of try to find him. But the fight between the Pharaoh and Cyclops is going on for several pages until he's knocked out. And of course, the Pharaoh takes him away. And of course, um, Gene loses contact, much contact with him. And of course, uh, they decide to take him to Egypt for some strange reason. I don't know why. And of course, the Pharaoh has his own. And, of course, he decides to wear a suit and a fez because he's Egyptian. Okay, fine. They want to return to Egypt, and he dresses like this. In civilian garb, this is by far the only time ever that this guy is hardly ever seen with civilian garb on. So, and, of course, they reveal that Cyclops was actually in another box, and apparently he's wearing some kind of, like, mask on his head he eventually does get off later on of course the um the x-men do find him along with uh and of course the pharaoh tries to take down the x-men's plane i'm not sure uh where i think they got this from a prehistoric it must be something he stole from lucifer possibly yes uh and of course the x-men tried to and they bail out and they, they actually survive and they get all back to egypt 
And, of course, uh, Cyclops eventually does break out of that mask that he was wearing by breaking where he uh, where he smashes it against a, a coffin and he gets out his brother and of course he takes off the mask and of course his brother starts attacking uh, the Pharaoh's henchmen and of course this big brawl breaks out the Summers brothers basically fighting uh, the Pharaoh's henchmen of course the Pharaoh comes out and, of course, he's stopped by Angel. Whips him around, throws him against the pyramid. And, of course, the rest of the X-Men show up. And it's fight, 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 fight. And, of course, um, apparently Alex uses his powers the first time, tries to take out the living Pharaoh. And this guy at the very end, basically, here's a shock and cliffhanger. Because in a moment of stress, you re reacted real that awesome power that you never knew you had. And that can be only one thing. You, Alex Summers, are a mutant. Yep. And of course, we continue with the uh, that part of the story. Does it continues the next issue? But then we have the Angel Part Two, Angel's Origin Part Two, with him revealing his first official costume, which he does later on put. He, he, he does later put back on to fight in another story arc. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he becomes an actual. Vigilante. He called himself the Avenging Angel. And apparently it's mentioned by Stan Lee that the Avengers at this point did not exist. Despite the fact that the first issue came out in September of 1963. So my guess is that uh it says that this takes place in early 1963, so yeah, I guess they can kind of go over that. And of course, he does vigilante work, beating him some bad guys, leaving with the police. And of course, he takes up um, uh, a regular apartment, and um, Iceman and Cyclops start to suspect that Angel might be an actual mutant. He actually is. And Cyclops, uh, not Cyclops, Professor Xavier overhears. Uh, tells him to go go get uh, over here. They they look in there mutant and, and he sends out. So I guess some speech about war being black and white stuff like that. He's probably going to evil. He sends out Cyclops, nice man, to recruit Angel into the X Men. Which they they uh, apparently gets this. Uh, and of course, while Angel's doing Avenging Angel's doing his stick, he gets his hands on some explosive device. And of course, uh, the issue ends with. Uh, uh, the Avenging Angel meet, meeting uh, Iceman and um, Cyclops, which I think the next issue wraps up this particular storyline, and I believe there's like one art backup feature, and it just follows Jean Grey show off powers. Yeah. All right. Next we cut to X Men number fifty six, and we had the Living Pharaoh become the Living Monolith. Yep, in this very issue he does do that. Now in this issue, this is the first. Yeah, definitely this is true. This is the first issue that Neil Adams takes over the artwork. Yeah, and the story is called, What is the Power? Yep, What is the Power? And we have the issue opening up with um, the X-Men in their flying jet. I'm still a little confused exactly what the heck this thing is. What's the bill at some point? And of course the... Um, Everyone is dealing with the stuff that happened in the last issue. And uh, Living Pharaoh basically talks, talks for a little bit and he surmises that basically that Alex Emerus and Cyclops are in fact brothers. And of course again, another fight with the, with the henchmen of the Pharaoh. And this fight goes on for a little while. And you gotta love Neil Adams' artwork. This artwork is really good. This guy really knows how to draw attention. And this is before he started doing the Batman books. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Gene tries to have his mental contact with uh, Cerebro. Um, and of course, Angel looks out, tries to find uh, uh, Alex Summers has been taken. And uh, he finds him, and apparently. And instead of like doing the knife thing, did like a couple issues back, 
in the previous issue. They apparently put him in this glass case for some reason, and they try to draw his power. And they draw so much power, and they, of course, seal him up as he must die. And then we have the living pharaoh become the living monolith. Look at this thing. He's freaking huge. I mean, this is one thing about the living monolith. And X-Men fight him for several pages. And, and, of course, he's like, oh, I can't control it. Um, I think, uh, let me check here. Yeah, okay, yeah, this particular part of the story, um, now, at this point, they had just defeated, now, this story does wrap up the whole Living Feral stuff. I will review my final thoughts in this in a minute. And, of course, the issue ends, like, basically, Alex warning that his powers again out of control. Which, that does get explored in the next issue, but the whole Living Hero stuff, that's done. And, of course, we cut away to the conclusion to the Angel origin story. Where Angel is fighting Cyclops, and, of course, they, uh, Professor Xavier talks to him for a little, for a little bit. And, of course, uh, um, <laughs> these people are like, oh, teenagers, they're all like... Yeah, there's this couple that lives below Angel. After fighting, and, of course, after fighting the, uh, after fighting the two X-Men for a little while, Angel... Finally listens to Xavier has his own explosive device, and he takes him up to the atmosphere. The thing goes off, and uh, thing goes off the atmosphere without a hitch. Angel gets down, and of course he joins the X-Men at the end of the issue. Nice little wrap-up. Now, what do I think of these three issues? Uh, overall, these three issues are really good. Despite the change in writer, uh, Arnold Drake, I'm not sure why Arnold Drake left the series after issue 54. My guess is because he probably heard Roy Thomas was coming back because at this point Roy Thomas had been gone for the book for a whole year. So, yeah, he'd been gone for a whole year, so he came back with issue 55 um, after being gone from it for, uh, actually it was more like 10 issues. Yeah, he was gone for the book about 10 issues. And, of course, Don Hick, uh, I think he still does the artwork for a good chunk of this as far as I can tell. Uh, actually, Don Hick only he doesn't do that much, but a good majority. But starting with issue 56, up until issue 63, and of course 65, Neil Adams does the artwork for the series. The artwork is fantastic. Uh, it was kind of sad to see Don Hick go because Don Hick has been at, at this point in the series have been drawing it ever since uh, Jack Kirby left the book. Yeah, he'd been drawing the book for a long time at this point. So at this point in time, he had been drawing the book for about, I'd say, three years. So I guess at this point, he's probably thinking, oh, yeah, it's time for me to go and hand out to Neil Adams. And Neil Adams' artwork in that first issue was really good. Now, I should also mention what happened to the Living Pharaoh. Now, I will mention the other thing in the minute. Uh, the Living Pharaoh does not become a major player in the action books for some time. Uh, well, actually, he doesn't got a major player in the Marvel Universe up until the Marvel graphic novels when it comes to the Living Planet. And then after that one shot, he doesn't become a major... He doesn't give all of a major storyline again. Of course, he doesn't give all of the following storyline. This, he's a minor player in that. He doesn't become a major player in a storyline again, uh, only for a couple more times after this. One is in the one shot when it comes to the Living Planet, and the other one is in the final story arc of Amazing X-Men. Um... But despite that, okay, and the backup feature was really good, really interesting. Uh, explored the origin story of Angel, place like right before the Beast feature. Nice little three-parter. Um, I think in the previous issue they show off his powers. Yeah, they show off his powers. Um, yeah, nice three issues. Good issues. I give all three issues a nine out of ten. Great storyline. Uh, the whole thing with Alex Summers, this, I think it starts to get wrapped up with the next issue because they begin one of the biggest storylines uh, at this point in time in the history of the X-Men when the Sentinels return. All right, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which will be episode 27, and I will go over that three-part storyline from issues 57 to 59 of Uncanny X-Men. Until then... See you there. Bye.